Hey, welcome back. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about the dynamics of drawing the lima bean. Okay, what is the lima bean? Well, the lima bean is the core of you and I and, my, and our friend here, the skeleton, of the rib cage, the abdomen, and the pelvic region combined into the torso. And I was just trained and taught to call it the lima bean. Because from almost any position, it looks like a bean kind of form and all its twisting and its turning in its contrapposto. So it's an exciting way to boost your drawing practice very quickly. So we'll go over this simple concept and I'll give you just a little bit of rudimentary, very rudimentary anatomy just to show you what you're drawing. And then we'll demonstrate and practice a lot of this. And I guarantee if, you, if, you're, if you're honed in on it, you'll be able to see this line of being really quickly in almost every pose and start to understand how the dynamics of this core is the building blocks of, of just about every pose that you have. Okay, so stay tuned. We'll be right back and we'll get started. Okay, let's get started. So what makes this so dynamic is that we can, you can, all of us can think in very simple terms about conceiving the human figure and especially its core, which is the rib cage area the abdomen area, the obliques, the rectus abdominis coming through, or the, the ab muscles, and the, and the pelvic region, both front, back, three quarters, and also side views, lounging views, upside down views. The only time it probably doesn't work so well is when you have extreme foreshortening. And we can talk about that um, at, in the foreshortening lessons that will, that will come in the future. So I just want to demonstrate a few simple concepts so we can get started before I jump into breaking this down a little bit further, this rib cage, uh, abdomen, torso area, or the lima bean area, and, and show you what I'm really talking about. This drawing behind me on the wall gives you some indication of that. We're just drawing a bean form, and it's the collective of all these three parts, these dynamic three parts that make up this particular uh, area of, of the figure, and really it's your core. Not only core from a physical training standpoint, right, but also from a drawing standpoint. The head, the upper extremities, the lower extremities, feet, hands, are somewhat uh, extraneous to the core of your pose. Once a pose is set, the rib cage the pelvic, the abdominal region, the heads can still move, the arms can still move, but you start to move the, the skeletal positions in through here dramatically and all the muscles that attach, then it becomes a very, very different pose. Very different. So, there's have a lot more, more extraneous movement through here for detailed kind of forms with the upper and lower extremities, but this really sets the dynamics of your pose, this, these core, these core ideas. All right, let's, let's draw a couple of beam forms and we'll see what that looks like. Well, all of this in its relationship can look like this. And we're talking, you know, simple. I mean, keep, keep it really simple. Keep those constructions. I can't emphasize enough, and I'll write it up here, that you want to keep this simple as possible. Don't get bogged down in details at all. That comes later on. We want to see these constructions in fluid, kind of motion. So I'm going to draw one that's fairly static, but it's still got a little root rhythm and movement to it. It becomes this wonderful little bean type form in through here without a lot of really dynamic kind of overlap. We get this kind of system in through here. And our rib cage here coming down. Very simple pelvic region coming into here. And all of a sudden, with just a simple bean-shaped construction, we get the aspects of a figure, a figure moving. Well, when this really comes into, I think, more dynamic play is when we start to see it uh, given the proclivities of human structure and human movement, a lot of contrapposto, uh, more dynamic interplay. Okay, so we have might have something like that, and then we can start to see something along this line. 
where we have the upper part through here, right? But then the lower part moves and it starts to really show off what can be an elegant tool, constructive tool for drawing the bean, the lima bean. And I'll write that up here too, the lima bean. So I'll use this term a lot now. I've already used it in some of the other videos, but I'll continue to use it quite a bit to show that these forms are in unison and harmony. And it starts to make this beautiful bean shape, okay? So we get that coming through the rib cage opening. Could be up here in that center line coming down and changing all the way over and moving out through that, that direction. All right, so there's a start there. And I, I want to show you something already is you get this expansion on this side. See, it's opening up. It's contracting on this side. So it's closing in like it's crunching like a Pac-Man mouth. Okay, on that side, so you get this crunching and pulling into with a rib cage, the 10th vertebrae in through here crashes into the oblique in through this area and then expands on the other side to give an opening. So it's like an accordion where you're constantly expanding on one side, contracting on the other. Do this sometime. You've probably already done this. So you get that stretching, you get a tilting, there's also bending forward and a pushing backward that you get that is related to this beam form both in front, three quarters, right, but also to the side. It all looks almost in every position kind of like a beam form. So if we draw one more to the side, looking at it from a profile view, we might get this kind of action into here. And by the way, I'm, I'm eliminating the head, I'm eliminating everything else right now except for the lima bean or the core. So we might get this kind of direction and we're from a side view. Now we have a profile view. Profile. And we get this. Right? And then we get this. You'll see artists, animators, use this a lot and what's happening right here is the opening to the rib cage right here's where the head and neck come through yeah head down here a little bit then we get the sternum in through here right rib cage coming through down and through there look how extensive and extended now the figure is expanding that way right and you get this crunching or contraction where the rib cage pops into your oblique. We'll look at those in a moment, and through here and through there. That, you know, you can't hold that pose for a long time. It really, it really kind of hurts when your back is stretching. Maybe you're tilting forward a little bit. The back is arched. The buttock, the glutes come into the back a little bit. So this kind of pose coming down can be can be very um, physically challenging, but a really a wonderful. Uh, dynamic way to see the figure and actually easier. The more uh, drama that models take, actually the easier it is to see that, that line of being both from the front uh, and from the back. So if we get a view of the beam moving this way in downward, right, and slightly towards us, there could be a twisting and a bending that happens all in one. Let me show you what happens. So we get the rib cage part here, okay, and that's the center, the back of the rib cage moving through here. The head, the neck would come through. The head could be coming in through here, right? And then we get this, or this could be even pushed even greater. The hips in the lower back in through there. So we get this together, the arms could be moving in that direction. So we get a real contraction in through here. Okay, this just could get shaved off a little bit. And so we get this expansion 
you see, on that side. So there's a constant uh, contrast between expansion and contraction, opening and closing like an accordion, expanding back and then contracting on the other side. So whatever opposite opposing uh, movement you're going to get either con uh, con expansion or contraction. So do that and you'll feel, you'll feel that kind of pose. But there's also the idea of the contraction and what else is the twisting. The contrapposto, you see it all over the Renaissance. They perfected that. So there's this idea of twisting, moving, and bending, and turning. And so it could be something like this over into that. That's a kind of an important kind of feeling. And so it feels like this moving, okay? Here's a beam, top beam, and through here, twisting in this direction. And this wants to then come back over like that, you see. And so the center can be over in through here. So you get this really strong contrapposto feeling of twisting and bending. So you get some expansion here, correct? And you get some contraction here, but then you also get the, the twisting of the torso that the muscles will allow. The muscles will allow the, the pelvis to be quite stationary and for us to be quite, quite stretching and tilting through a little bit. So let's do another one. We'll do another one uh, over here. So the action could be here, twisting on through ending and twisting and on, on over and then we see this top part of our beam it encapsulates from the shoulder region here through to the rib cage the bottom of the rib cage in the lower line of being it could be all one form you didn't have to overlap it i like to overlap i think that's probably an easier idea and then coming on through here well to get that twist this will overlap push it wants to push this way and then come twist and come back that way while this form wants to contract in and then come over in through here and then we get this rounded kind of quality. So not only are we pushing the center over here all the way over but then around and through and then back over. Okay, So that can be very, very challenging to take a pose that way, but it's a beautiful concept actually to draw. So the idea of the lima bean and all its elegant kind of forms. Now, let's, let's, since we've got this idea of the bean form, maybe we'll do one more kind of reclining down in this section here. I'll show you that from the side. So if, if we have a simple head construction here, but then we've got a little action maybe moving up, or there's a yoga pose perhaps here where the ribcage sits flat and it comes up and over. We can get a beam form here. Watch this. So we can get an arched beam here and then back down through here, like so. And then we get this wonderful quality of arching that back in through here. So the back arches in through, here's the center and down over, rib cage opening where the neck comes through to the head and through and over and you get this really nice contraction here, right? Center and then this beautiful elongation up and through there. So it's all about contracting it's all about expanding and seeing the lima bean form in multiple different viewpoints in almost any different pose. And the more extreme, the better. Again, the only time it doesn't happen is, I think I've got a little room here, is if we get extreme foreshortening. If we get a figure flying at us, let's say we have Superman flying directly at us, its most simple, elegant look might be something like that. Here's the shoulder region in through here and in the head 
comes popping through here. Well, that doesn't look like a thing at all. Here's the head, eyes, nose, and through here, right? And then arms could come out, move in this direction, move in that direction. Well, so we have four short, you know, maybe the feet are going to be back in here, back in through here, and that's coming right at us. So there are limits to what the line of being can do, but not a whole lot. So no matter if you're an, uh, an animator or if you're a fine artist looking at the figure, you're, you'll do this approach in slightly different ways. Animators have a kind of style. Designers have a style, fine artists have a style, but it's all relevant. The thinking is the same. It's looking for that line of being both front and also back in the expansion and contraction. Okay, now let's go on to the next step and let's take a little bit deeper look. But it's still a very simplified approach to the anatomy and what you're drawing and what you're trying to find in these approaches of the rib cage, the abdominal region, the rec the uh, abdominal th wall through here, the obliques, the sacrospinalis muscles in the back, and then a simple view of the pelvis in three. Okay, let's go on to that. Okay, so let's slow down now a little bit. We, talk, we talked a little bit about just the, the, the simple, uh, very gestural construction of the line of being forms here to, to uh, behind me. And now let's slow down a little bit and let's take a look, look at, anatomically speaking, the simple essentials of what we're drawing and why and how they fit together a little bit further and how they work to hopefully elevate your understanding of drawing the figure uh, and make it greater and um, more essential, more flexible for, for, future, for future reference. Okay, so let's take a look at the first part of the lima bean, which the total bean form, which is uh, the rib cage and what you'll notice with the rib cage it is really a kind of an egg form it's very narrow especially narrow at the top and then it gets a little bit wider like so so we see something like that so already we have we have kind of a, a, a beam form going this is you know in the, in the front view in through here uh, so the Next thing to think about is the opening of the rib cage, which is tilted downward. And so let me let me also draw one from uh, the side side for you as well, so you'll see that is we have the initial rib cage hanging off the back of the spine in through here. Here's where the head would be up in through here in this region hanging off the back of the spine like so. And it moves down the spine, moves down and through here into the pelvic region. Okay? And the tilt of the opening of the rib cage is on a downward kind of trajectory like that. Okay? So we have that opening of the rib cage in through here. Now we have the next thing to, to, to take a little bit of measure of is the sternum coming down, which is the center of the, the front part of the human figure, right in through here. So you have this measurement, bringing that down, and then the same measurement here, from the top of the sternum to the bottom, before it gets into that little pointy extrusion, is the same measurement coming over to about a little bit more than 60 degrees in this direction. So you have this same measurement here, in the same measurement here to get you back over to the egg form of the rib cage in through here. Okay, so that gives you kind of that that nice place to start the feeling of a more complex kind of kind of form in through here. And of course, this comes down with the profile view in through here, ending here, and then over back over, and then getting up and through that way. And so now as we come down a little bit, we can take the same sternum measurement in its distance and we can say, okay, one, two, and then we get three here. So three of these same measurements gets us to the bottom of your pelvic iliac crest 
in through here. So the bottom of it, not the top part, in through here. So if I give you this, this bottom kind of curve running through here coming around. So we have one, two, three, and then half of this measurement right here gets you to the bottom of the pelvis right in through this area. It's kind of a bowl, blocky or bowl shape, but we're just going to make it kind of a curved bowl for now. Okay? I think that will be, that will help us in our, in our appropriation. So the bottom of that crest in through here, we get to our pelvis. Alright? So we see it over here. One, okay, two, three to the bottom of the curve, okay, and then half to the bottom of the pelvis. So one, two, three, and then about a half, right in through, right in through there. Gives us a nice kind of feeling. And we're already starting to get, if you can tell, already kind of a nice little natural curve, you see, to that, to that beam form. So we're connecting the rib cage, okay, the rib cage, the abs, and also the pelvis, all together, grouping it all together for that all-important beginning structural component of the beam form. It's really kind of a powerful tool when you're drawing to see that. We'll take some time. We're going to slow all this down so you can start to see this together. Now, what happens in through here in the middle section is where you have, in the front, is where you have your abdominal muscles, rectus abdominals muscles, in through here. Okay, and they attach a little bit higher up on the sternum. They come all the way down, kind of taper down into the bottom of, attaching down here to the end of the pelvic region. Keep it real simple. Okay, so if we see that up here, a little bit higher to the side, all the way down, arching through, and they attach right in through here, and over, all the way down, and attaching a little bit to the side and through here, okay? So we have that structural component there. And then the, just to split this is important, and, and something that's, that's interesting too is, as it splits down into two sections, the and it's really an eight pack and and not a six pack, in the sense that you have four pairs of abdominal muscles and they're higher or what we don't see as much up in down in through here. Okay, and they're a little bit longer as they attach and down and through here. Okay, and here and here, you can kind of see that through. And they're, they're essentially like, if we look at it from the side, they're like rectangular structural cubic forms like that. Okay, side by side, this, here's the side, and then over, and then down like that. So we have, I'll shade that so you can see it up and over, and then down, up and over, and down. And so they're little bitty kind of blocks, and they are more vertical, or excuse me, horizontal. And then the higher we go up the anatomical ladder of your abdominals, if you will, the more arched that they get. So somebody that, that's really developed, that's got super super duper, you know, developed abs. You'll see that six part of it, and sometimes you'll see this bottom part, but not, not as much. Obviously they wear clothing too, so it's harder to see. And so this attaches up a little higher, up above the sternal end, up in this area too, as well. So I don't want to go too deep, I just want to give you a little bit of knowledge. I'll do I'll do a, a whole anatomy series in about a year or so. There's a lot of information I want to give you guys out there at NKU and also YouTube land, um, but I will get to that at, at, some, at some point uh, in the future. So remember, these are like blocky, rectangular blocking forms, and by the way, they're not always very neat and symmetrical. 
okay? They do have a very uh, tendency to be very asymmetrical too, which I think is, is um, important to realize. So I'll put them over here to the side a little bit so you can see that. They're coming through and through here. We get a side view of that. <coughs> of rectus abdominis or just the ab walls in through here, okay? From the side, we can see they shaved a little bit and through here. And then lastly, uh, on the front side are the obliques or the, the side walls of, of your, uh, your flank pads, if you will, of your, of your beam form, okay? And so they attach a little bit higher up in through here coming down. But what we see and what we really feel is this kind of pad form up in through here as they come over. Now, they sit on top of, they don't attach to the cresting region of the pelvis, okay? That's not that important to know right now. But let's just go, go ahead and give that to you. So they sit up higher, and as they come down, they feel, you feel this padded kind of form in through here rounded, squared, square rounded kind of kind of form right into here and over in this direction. So your oblique muscles here would be coming through the rib cage and the serratus interior and coming down through in this direction to the side. And they sit on the side of your abdominal muscles right in through, right in through there. So here's your obliques sitting on top of your pelvic region, right in through, right in through there. There we go. You see that. Okay. So that makes um, generally the lima bean form to the front and to the profile to the side spine coming in through here, okay? So let's take a look now at the back of the lima bean and see what's going on there a little bit and also the a three quarter view. So let's, okay, now let's look at the back view of the, the uh, lima bean through here before we start to flex and turn this. So look at the back. And then we'll also look at three quarter. So the back view is that narrow egg two as well coming down, right? So you have this, okay? And I'll just bring this kind of a egg form, bell form, if you will, oval kind of form, if you will, coming through in this direction. And so we don't see the opening of the rib cage, although we can feel it coming through like that, right? So we'll we'll have put the rib cage on. And I think what's important to, to remember here, especially for later on, is the back now, the spine comes through very strongly in the center of your, your, your back form. So let me darken that in a little bit so we can, we can see that you can see that. So that comes through, this arch is through and down. We'll get that coming up through and through here. Rib cage coming through in this direction. And you get that spine coming through here, okay? So just keep in mind that this can arch, these arch down in our point of view here that we're looking at. And so this comes in, that turning under. Students miss that. It's important to get that later on. This turns turns inward like a canal. So water would run uh, like a canal, okay, in your back there. And let's put on, we'll put on the scapula a little bit too. Scapula tar start here uh, higher and sit on top of your, the egg form of your uh, rib cage. And they come, they end about halfway down your, your figure, about right here, the figure of the back rib cage, very triangular in orientation, keep that very simple. So they have a very triangular uh, kind of feel to them, almost equilateral, not quite, right through there. So a halfway, just remember, 
halfway down the back, right in through there. Okay, scapula coming coming through the back there. And so, <clears throat> what's important about this beam form is you get the <clears throat> the pelvis coming through here, and you get this sacrum now down in through here. It's a very pointy, triangular kind of form curved in this direction, and you get the we'll put on the pelvic region in through here, coming in through like so, we'll get a diagrammatic kind of feel, arched over a little bit higher, arched over a little bit higher in through here. And what you get, you get the spine coming through, right? But what's important you'll see is these uh, sacrospinalis muscles. Basically that's smashing all these muscle groups together. Sacrum right in through here and also obviously the spine up in through here and they come around in this way they start through here and they are stabilizing the back part of your form so that when you're bending the rectus abdominals muscles in the front and when you're arching back they help support uh, your form. You can have a lot of lower back pain because of that. Now they tend to bulge out right in through here. They're kind of, they're really like tube form muscles. Of course you have your trapezius muscle that comes up and they come up and they attach up to the base of the neck. Now what's important about these is that they can be decently prominent in, in many back views and they give the back, which can be a very blunt form, more dimension. So they're kind of like these little snaky tubes back here. Can you see that? Look for them. You'll see them on several views that we do. And in your drawing with our models, when our models come in to draw, you'll see them. And I'll point them out to you uh, when you see them. And they can be very, very pronounced, especially even more so in females, but really in, in all models. Okay, so we have the sacrospinalis muscles, they come down, they attach to the sacrum and they wrap around the sacrum as well as other sheathing fibers that wrap around this area. Of course we have the glutes here in the back that wrap around the buttocks too as well, like that. Now you have the obliques coming down into here that attach and you see them in this direction as well. Over here and over and so you have the obliques and of course they sit on top of that, that arch in through, in through that region there. So we have that. Very important, very important structure to see. And again, simple, simple ideas, simple forms, and simple, simple ways to keep your, your understanding of anatomy into what, what it is that you need. We don't need to know anatomy like a, necessarily a doctor does. Only what makes forms obvious, surface forms, bone and muscle and tendon and cartilage and ligaments come alive that we can we can see. I don't, I don't think we need to know a lot about the pancreas or what the liver does. That's for the anatomist, the internist I would think. For us we need to know what these surface forms are doing so that we can see them and draw them in our artistic practice, okay? So now we have what makes up more of the lima bean form uh, here on the sun. I can shade, uh, shade it a little bit further. You know, I want to, you know, make it clear that the, the spine is a canal coming through. It is underneath, it gives passage to the spine, the vertebral columns, you've got to have that. So you can't really just draw the back like this. That's just basically a number one in parentheses. Hey, I'm number one. What we really need is, what we're really saying is that back is two tubes, two cylinders, right? Jammed together close enough to allow just a little space to separate through so we have a little passage coming through. Think of it as a waterfall and that's where the water falls through the back down into what would be the buttock region and through here. The glutes would come 
in through into this region. Very important to, I think, to get that and to, to understand that. Okay, now let's go on to three-quarter view of our lima bean form. Okay, let's draw a three-quarter three view so we can get a sense of the action coming down this direction. Maybe we'll try to align as best we can up and through here. So we're three-quarter three quarter front. There's three-quarter back, there's three-quarter front, there's profile, there's full frontal, there's about seven-eighths as we turn around the model. We're looking at this one now at good, good old three-quarter, which is one of my favorite views because it gives you such a dimensional quality of anything that you want to draw. Sculptors know this intuitively because they're always working in 3D no matter what they do. Well, with, with drawing and painting people, we've got to force the issue. It's what makes it a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, harder, is you've got to be able to learn. So this is three quarter right in through there to get that nice plane break. So working with the, the rib cage, we'll see it do this. We'll come around with the egg form, maybe a little bit more here on the, on the left side of the model in the here. Now now the center, and maybe I'll go ahead and, and, and draw the entire line of beam a little bit first. A very static kind of pose. Even a static pose though has some movement. You see that? So we never want to draw the figure straight up or straight vertical because it just doesn't do that in anatomy. Alright, so we've got now a three-quarter feeling of our form with the pubic arch down and through this direction. Okay, all right. So now we can come across and say, all right, I'm taking a kind of an account of perspective if things are moving in this direction. So <clears throat> we'll give a little bit of slight uh, looking down on the model. And that means that the opening of the rib cage, very narrow, but remember it's tilted, tilted slightly downwards. Be about right, right there. Okay. So that pushes the center. Remember the sternum is the center, just like the spine is the center of the back. So we'll push that sternum all of this center, that line from the sternum all the way down to the end of the abdominal muscles, right in through there. So our measurement of our sternum visually I take, right in through there. So remember now, coming down, this measurement, so we're three quarters, so we got a little perspective to take care of. Coming down, this is about the same length through here. Okay, get that curve. And then we can come back like that egg form. You see that? Okay. Coming back in through here, narrower in through here. Females are more narrow than males. Males have broader chests, broader rib cages. Females have narrower rib cages. Females have pelvises that point forward more and down and are wider because of childbirth. And males are, are, are uh, do not because obviously we don't we don't have childbirth. All right, so we get to that through here. So I can bring, I'll bring it a little bit lower to take into account. Remember, where I'm, I'm giving measurement, that is, and this is not a big, big deal, but that's the actual, the tenth rib. There's a few little extra down in through here, so you kind of get this look. But I'm really thinking about, I was trained in LA to, to feel that through. Now we'll come across our, our uh, drawing in through there, and we'll feel this side, the right side of the rib cage coming in right in through here. Okay. And so we can feel this on over and down. And so we'll keep this now more in, more in perspective. Okay. Right in through there. Okay. So now we'll put the abdominals on. And I'm shooting down here to the bottom of our, of our uh, pelvic region, right? Here's the iliac curve. And through, here's the base of it. Right there. Kind of like a bread, bo bread box or a true box. See that boxy, how it gets boxy like that? And over and down, kind of a tilted box. And so now we can put our abs on. So like up in through here, we're coming down looking through here, right? They'll start 
up a little higher. They start a little higher in the sternum. Coming down, they have two sides, and they'll almost push, and you can feel this, almost push to the end over and through here, and they kind of tuck. The rib cage kind of tucks over. You can see that kind of, there's a little space in between. Here you can kind of see right in through there. So there's a little hollow space where your ribs kind of tuck, tuck under. And you can feel that, that section with the abs in. Then we can come over with our abs. Bring down that long, it's a long ton of triangular movement. Really elegant. Right in through here, kind of coming all the way down. And remember, it splits in two, like so. Push that center way over, way over to there. Okay. We'll push it over. And then we have eight. And then we'll start at the top. And more of a dynamic angle at the top. Then as we move down the abdominal wall chain, they tend to get a little flatter, more horizontal coming across. And then we have the last two that are longer and leaner, more, more longer kind of triangles. These are boxier, and these, the bottom two begin to feel more triangular in formation. Let me clean this up just a little bit so you can see it. And again, these are rectangular, or boxy, here's a good example right here, boxes. They're three-dimensional. So when you, we get to more advanced drawing lessons and also when we have the model in class for a longer time, you'll get to render these out. If you see the abdominal walls, we want to think anytime, right now, for our purposes, anytime we're drawing, we're thinking 3D always until we get to more advanced expressive components and then we can say, hey, all hell breaks loose, and we can go for all kinds of crazy, uh, expressive, you know, uh, movements and components and really get into some, some, some fun things. So, coming on down, this abdominal wall. This, there's a, that line separate in, in between here. It's called the white line of the, of the wall. It's wider tissue, but it picks up kind of a white value when you draw it. Light gets trapped in there. So it's kind of that white line coming coming down and through there. Let me attach it over. All right, so <clears throat> can push this a little bit more. And then lastly, let's finish this out with the oblique start up and through here. Serratus anterior muscles come down and through there. They're kind of like knives. <clears throat> and the oblique start here, come down, and they get sort of a, a boxier, roundier feel. And if you have a heavier model, these, these can be out through here. We, can call them, we call them the love handles or the flanks, really. I just call them the obliques. And they sit on top over next to the abdominal muscles in through here. You wouldn't really see them much on this side in a three-quarter view. And I can put a little shadow to them so we can see this a little cleaner. So I think it's an, un, uh, essential to see what you're drawing a little bit and help you with that line of being formed. And then now we can take and start to look at model poses and relate all this anatomy. And the, the best way to get better at anatomy is to draw, draw from it over and over and over again. You can memorize the names, that's not a bad thing. Memorize the names, um, memorize, whoops, memorize um, insertion points, but true memory really comes with understanding the form, the three-dimensional look of the bones, the three-dimensional look of the muscles and how they attach. You could just call them a, B, C, and D. Now, I'm not saying call on that, but what's more important is to be brilliant with the names, like an anatomist would, or be brilliant with understanding the forms and being able to draw them in any position. And again, we're always going back to this idea that we're relating everything we do into simple form, right? The line of being kind of two egg forms, 
Or this could be made into one long cylinder too that twists and curves in that direction. So remember, your best friends are your the sphere, the cube, and the cylinder. Okay, forget about style. These, these, are, these drawings are very diagrammatic. They're very dry. They're boring. I don't draw like this in my own practice. As a matter of fact, I don't even use the figure currently in my own practice. But I'm trained well with the figure. So don't get hooked up in style when you're looking at these videos or other artists or other, uh, you're looking at other people that you're learning to draw from. Get involved with the understanding of the model in its various functions and boy will you take off in your drawing practice really really nicely okay all right so now let's go on and let's look at some poses